To say that Chet Holmgren has been good in his rookie season would be an understatement because he's having one of the best rookie seasons in recent memory. Entering the NBA, Chet was a big time prospect due to his rare combination of height, movement skills, and intangibles. And after missing all of what would have been his rookie season in 2023 due to an offseason injury at a pro am game, People were interested to see the upside Chet would sow in 2024. However, while the upside is still very much real, it's not just about how good he can be one day, it's about how good he is right now. When you'll get the production, the tape, and what Chet has established himself as, it's hard to say he isn't the best rookie in the NBA right now. And in this video, I want to talk about just how good Chet is right now and why I believe he's going to be one of the most valuable players in the entire NBA one day. But quickly before we go any further, if you're new and like basketball, I'd really appreciate it if you would like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to be notified whenever I release a video. I make videos about basketball all the time, and liking and subscribing are the two best ways can help me on the YouTube algorithm, help support the channel, and help me reach my goal of 10,000 subscribers by the end of the season. Let's try and get 100 likes on this video so YouTube recommend to others. Anyways, let's talk about Chet Holmgren. This season, Chet Holmgren is averaging 18 points per game, 7.3 rebounds per game, 2.7 assists per game, and 2.5 blocks per game on 55.9, 40.1, 79.7 splits, and a 66.1 true shooting percentage. His efficiency this season is unprecedented for a rookie producing at the level he does. 8.5% above league average field goal percentage, 3.4% above league average three-point percentage, 10.1% above league average two-point percentage, 8.4% above league average effective field goal percentage, 8% above league average true shooting percentage. It's one thing for a rookie to be above average in terms of league efficiency, it's another to do it while producing the way Chet has. This isn't a case of a 7 to 10 point per game drop big. This is an 18 point per game scorer taking shots on multiple levels of the court. Chet is a very good off ball shooter. He's shooting 40.1% on 4.23 attempts per game, and of his attempts, he's shooting 44% on 3.8 catch and shoot attempts per game. He has very fluid shot mechanics, he has very good shot prep, he's a fluid player as a movement shooter. His shot is very hard to contest to stop how tall he is and how long his arms are. And being this good of an off-ball shooter at 7-1 is game-changing because it opens up a lot of the offense in terms of spacing. Not a lot of players are tall enough to contest his shot that might be able to hang on the perimeter and those who are tall enough to get a good contest really can't defend that far out. And this makes him the perfect complement to say Gildas Alexander who is arguably the most effective offensive creator within the arc in the NBA. Say benefits from the spacing that Chet brings to the table as it drags bigs further away from the paint. Chet benefits from how dominant Say is within the arc, which creates easier looks for him. Chet is also a great play finisher. He's shooting 74.6% at the rim on 4.7 attempts per game, putting him in the 96th percentile in terms of rim efficiency. On top of that, he's proving to be effective playing off of others like Say and J-Dub. 74% of his field goal attempts are assisted on, and while some may view this as a knock against Chet because he's not creating all the time, it's actually a positive in his game because believe it or not, being able to produce at a high level while also not taking away from other creators on the court is valuable. He's a great rim runner, he can roll to the basket, catch lobs, attack and close out, cut, when you add that to a high-level catch-and-suit ability and overall ability to suit the basketball, you get a player that's extremely role versatile and lineup flexible, which is one of the most valuable traits you can have as an NBA player. And while a majority of his offense comes from playing off of others like say Gildas Alexander, it's not like he's incapable on the ball. He has a good handle, he's very fluid, he has good creation feel on the ball, great body control, now he's not perfect, he can definitely get better, but you see enough of him on tape creating for himself to believe the upside to handle main ops and reps is real. Just because he's most effective playing off of creators doesn't mean he's a pumpkin on the ball. 
He has a massive height and movement skill advantage against most bigs. He's shown upside to draw fouls. He can create offense for himself in the mid-range area, and I think it's only going to get better from here. He's not Kevin Durant, but he has upside to make on-ball creation a legit part of his game, and given how effective he is already, this area getting better will lead to very high-end outcomes. But while Chet is a good offensive player right now, he's a great player on defense right now. And for as much upside as he has on offense, he has even more upside on defense. Which really says something because he's a great defender right now and can only get better. He's a monster soft blocker. He uses that 7-1 height with the 7-6 wingspan to his advantage. He times his blocks well. He times can test well. He's a great athlete with fluid movement skills, which allows him to defend multiple scenarios, help side, paint, hold his own on switches, drop, heads. He absorbs contact better than you would think. He's a super high field defensive player with an insane motor, which are two indicators you can look for in elite defenders. And he does need to get stronger. He's around 208 pounds right now. Ideally, he gets to 220 pounds, which would be enough functional strength while maintaining his movement skills. I know that might seem light for 7-1, but he's not just a post defender, it's about how he affects the entire half court. And even then, at 208 pounds, he's already great defensively and a problem for opposing offenses. He's such a great defensive player because it doesn't really matter if an opposing player can get to those spots, because even when they get to those spots, at the very least, it's going to be difficult, and at the most, it's going to be impossible to get a shot over him. Because he's 7-1 with a 7-6 wingspan, and even if you push him around, he holds his positioning well. This is why I believe that the strength concerns were a bit overborn with him coming out of college. He does need to get stronger, I acknowledge that, but at the same time, he dominated defensively at every level prior to the NBA, despite being a skinnier player. So to see him do it in the NBA isn't shocking, because being a great defender is about more than just how strong you are. It's about your feel and movement abilities as well, which Jet has. He's already a great defensive player, and he's going to be one of the best in the NBA very soon, if he isn't already. If you were to ask me right now who I believe the Rookie of the Year is, I would say it's Chet Holmgren. Don't get me wrong, what Wemby is doing is unreal, and I don't think Wemby would be an undeserving winner. I understand that Chet has an advantage over the rest of the rookie class. He got a red suit year to be around an NBA team with NBA trainers. That's a real advantage. But I just look at what Chet is doing, and it's rare for a rookie, even with that advantage. It's rare for a player this young to be the clear-cut second best player on a potential top seed in a conference. And that's what Chet is. His offensive value in terms of production, efficiency, effect, combined with his defense, makes him a great player right now. You could argue he's an all-star this season. He's been that good. And the scary part is, he's just scratching the surface. He's only going to get better from here. I think he's going to be someone that makes many all-star teams and makes many all-NBA teams in the future as this 20 to 25 point per game, 10 rebound per game guy that also can be a monster defensive boy. I think he's going to be a perennial defensive player of the year candidate. I think at his best, he's a top two option on a contender. And the thing is, he might already be one. But that's the end of this video if you made it to this point. Thank you so much. Again, haven't already? Like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, notify whenever I release a video. I make videos about basketball all the time, and liking and subscribing are the two best ways to help me out the YouTube algorithm, help support the channel, and I'm reach my goal of 10,000 subscribers by the end of the season. Let's try and get 100 likes on this video so YouTube will recommend it to others. Let me know what you think about Chad Holmgren in the comment section below. Do you think he's the rookie of the year? Do you think he could be an all-star? How good do you think he's going to be? Is he the second best player on OKC right now? If not, where does he rank? And who do you think is the second best player on the team? I definitely think there's an argument for J-Dub. But put all that down below. But with that being said, have a nice day. And I'll see you guys in the next one.